What's up everybody? In this video we're kicking off a brand new series. We're going to build out a stock market tracking application in React.js. So basically what that's going to do is it's going to let you select stocks to follow, put some stocks in your portfolio and say how many of them you have and you're going to be able to watch statistics about them throughout each day, maybe look at some historical data and this sort of thing. Before we jump in, I just want to mention that you should check down in the description. We're going to be putting some links to some free products and some free uh, resources and all sorts of good stuff that's been helpful for us and that we've developed. Um, so definitely check that out. Also subscribe to the channel if you like this video and give the video a thumbs up. It really helps. All right, so as you may have guessed, we're going to be using data from this IEX cloud. Um, which is a really cool website. I haven't really used it much, but I've been exploring it a little bit and I'm pretty excited to check it out. Um, it is a premium product for the most part. They do have some limited use, which we're gonna take advantage of for free. Um, but really, if you actually wanna build something out that's more of a real product, nine bucks a month is, is nothing to kind of get started. Um, so, um, let's take a look at what we actually do get access to here. So we're primarily, at least to start, going to be making use of this intraday U.S. stock prices. Um, at least that's kind of how my idea is set up right now. I'm kind of working this out as we go, which you will see. Um, they also have really, really nice API documentation. Um, Basically, the only thing you need to do is set up an account, and then you'll get this publish, pl publishable, excuse me, publishable API token, um, which, as it says here, isn't secret. So I'll be using mine, and I'm not going to do anything crazy to try to hide it. Um, it's probably not great if you use mine, so just set up your own. It's free. Um, it's not a big deal. Um, with that said, let's actually look at some endpoints that we're going to try to use here. All right, so let's scroll down to stock prices. So as I was saying, so you can see the full list of things here for stock prices, and we were looking and you can see that you get intraday prices back. Um, so what this does, this actually returns back for every minute of the stock market trading day, it's going to give you back a bunch of stats about that minute, what the high, low, open, close was, average, so on and so forth. So this is pretty cool. I think we should be able to use this endpoint to get us started. Um, this is not... So let me show you what I'm actually wanting to do really quick. So I'm going to jump over to my uh, Adobe Illustrator. I've started a little mock-up here. It's not much of anything yet, but what I'm what I'm thinking of is something kind of like this where you see your total portfolio, you can see changes in the day, obviously these are not fully fleshed out, but you can say how many shares you have of a particular stock. If you click on it, this area on the right would pop up with charts and so on. So I've got to kind of finish this out, but I wanted to go ahead and just see how the data collection works. So I think we should be able to use this to kind of kick things off. However, I think if we were to scale this up to be a real product, this would not be the right thing to pull. Um, we would really want to get this uh, price probably or something. I haven't really dug in too, too deeply uh, into this particular API yet. So I'll learn more and I'll tailor everything as we go. But you can't use this API endpoint on the free tier. Um, you can only have access to intraday and historical, which are super cool by themselves. So it's definitely uh, great to play around with. But if we need to pivot as we go, um, as I learn more about this, we will. Um, so you're just going to have to kind of be along for the journey. The reason I'm doing this series is actually that I've kind of... Uh, held off on learning React for a long time, and I decided that I'm doing it now. Um, so I thought this would be a cool time to try to make a somewhat beginner-friendly project. Um, that said, if anything in this series is like sort of confusing or I skip over something, there are some great um, sort of piece-by-piece -piece courses on YouTube and other places that will take you through like the, every single concept that you need to know in order to build a React app. 
I'm not going to do that here, but I'm going to build a full project of some kind piece by piece so that we end up with something cool in the end. Um, so that's basically the promise is we'll have a cool thing in the end that uses a stock market API and does something. Um, I have a rough idea right now, but you know um, we're going to have to kind of see what all the capabilities are um, and what the limitations are as we go. Based on what I know right now, I think this will work. You know, this will, we can query a stock ticker, you know, at 11 a.m. and it'll give us the 90 minutes of data before that. Um, there's a limit of 50 messages, um, which I'm not sure about, and it's one, I don't, I'm not entirely sure what that actually means, 50 messages. Um, so anyway, we will figure this out, but for now, I don't know everything. So um, with that said, let's take a look at how we can actually play with this API. So I have open in another uh, window, I've got my... Um, account open, this is my public key here, publishable key, whatever. And I've just got the dev tools opened up. So let's go ahead and save that token in a, um, in a variable here. So what I wanna do is actually just play around with this a little bit and see if we can get a sense for how this is gonna work. And then in the next episode, we're actually going to go ahead and set up the React app. Um, I'm way deep down in this thing, and I just want to see my intraday prices thing here. So um, we need this. So it's stock slash symbol slash intraday prices. Um, at the very top of the screen, we have a base URL that we need to get. Let me just go up to the top here, API reference, the base URL. So I did do a little bit of reading here, and what we need to do is copy this. And so we're going to say uh, URL equals this. So first of all, um, I'm looking at the real thing. I'm not looking at the sandbox or whatever they call it. Um, I need to look at the stable API. And I think that was stocks slash, and then we put a ticker so we could do like uh, Apple, and then what was it? Intraday prices. And then I think we need to do token equals, and then we'll just add our token onto it. And so now we can see our URL here. Okay, so let's try to fetch the URL and just see what happens. Okay, so I got a 404, so maybe I got the URL wrong somehow. Let me go back over here really fast and check. All right, so I wrote stocks right here and it's just stocks so let's see if that will work if we set our URL to be stock right here and then fetch the URL okay so there's no errors so let's actually get this thing to show us what data it's giving back so we're going to uh, fetch the URL which you saw it turn returns a, a promise so we're gonna say okay then uh, response and we want to return response.json and let's see what that looks like I don't think I need to return on a single line like that okay so we have another promise so then we'll say um, data and we'll just console.log data. So as you can see it's 8 p.m. here and I'm in central time so the stock market closed uh, what was it five hours ago three o'clock my time. Um, so the trading day is over is the point so you can see here that we get back 390 elements uh, in an array, so there are 390 objects here. 
and um, each one of these is regarding a single minute of trading. So you can see for that minute uh, what the high, the low, you know, what was the open, what was the close, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of interesting things you can do with this data. Um, we're not probably not going to get into that here. Who knows? Um, into some of the more advanced things you could do. Um, but I just wanted to show and take a look at what's there. So we have 390 data points because that's the number of minutes in a normal trading day. So it's, I think it's six and a half hours. All right. So, you know, what we could do is say like um, uh, prices equals, uh, well, we can just actually declare a variable prices. And then we can run our thing here again and say, prices equals data I don't want it to auto complete here so now we should be able to say prices right and then if we do prices dot last or prices so used to Ruby okay so prices dot prices dot length minus one is that right yeah, so that should give us the very last one in the list. So this is the most recent price, right? So I think that the disadvantage of using this as opposed to just grabbing the current price, so I went and did a little bit more reading off camera. The main problem is that, so essentially, if you, well actually let me go to other window here. So they have an explanation of how messages work and so essentially what they're doing is trying to calculate uh, how much they should charge you if you're on the premium versus how many free messages you have left if you're on the free. So if you'll remember down here in the free one, we get 50,000 core messages per month. So the <clears throat> question becomes how many, what does that mean? So in our, um, in our stock, intraday prices what that basically comes down to is um, it's one per symbol per time interval up to a use of a max use of 50 so if you were to query less than uh, a like less than the whole day you know maybe you could use less than 50 messages but they're saying for every time you query you get a maximum of 50 messages charged against you and so here they're saying if you query Twitter um, for 11 a.m., it's going to give you back 90 minutes of messages for a total of 50. So this is a really inefficient way to use your message credits, basically. Um, so you wouldn't want to use this in any kind of production for the way that we're going to use it. I dug in just a little bit more into this particular section. And actually they have some parameters you can use here which you can look at chart last and give it a number and it will give you back the amount of elements you asked for starting with the most recent. So I think what we can actually do is um, we'll set our URL here. So we'll ask for chart last equals one. So just give us the very last one and the token equals token. And um, then we want to fetch this URL, set the prices equal to data. So now we have prices and we have 359. Okay, so I mean this is actually what we want. Um, and you know, what we probably wouldn't display here would be the closing price of this minute. Now I don't know what the pros and cons of using this method are versus using like the real-time price. I would assume that maybe this is like a little bit delayed or something like that. Um, but for our purposes, I think this is fine. And we'll try it during trading hours just to be sure. Um, I keep getting lost in here. So intraday price is what we're looking at. And so what that should do is basically only use one message so it's one per symbol per time interval. So if we ask for like 10 stocks, it's gonna use 10 messages. 
so you know like our our thing because it's a sort of a demo app it may refresh every like 10 or 15 minutes or something we're not going to do any like real time stuff because we're not going to get on the premium thing for this particular uh, series at any rate I think this is cool so now we know uh, basically how we're going to get our data for the first couple of features that I want to build out um, so that's basically it for this episode um, it's kind of meandering and so on but I think it's useful to kind of explore APIs and this is kind of my style is just to work through things on camera uh, to some extent uh, because I think it helps other people who are newer um, kind of learn to do the same thing it's just work through problems so all of that said, if you have any questions, definitely throw them in the comments and I'll try to answer everything that I can. Um, in the next video, we'll get into actually building out the app in React and um, hopefully uh, that'll be useful to you. If you like this video, please subscribe to the channel and uh, I'll talk to you in the next tutorial.